it's time for another 30 day challenge. For the month of November, I'm going to paint a Pantone chip each day. This challenge was created by Big Blue Tang on Instagram. She makes the most beautiful paintings and it inspired me to come up with 30 paintings of my own too. So I went onto Amazon and purchased a set of 100 postcards. Look how pretty they are. I am going to choose 30 cards from this pile of 100 and for each day, I will paint a painting inspired by the color of that chip or by the name of the Pantone chip. So without further ado, let's get on to the challenge. I will be briefly going through my process for each day's painting as well as sharing some of my thoughts on this challenge. Also for some days I used reference photos as well mostly from Unsplash so I will be putting the reference photo at the bottom right corner of the video along with the photographer's name if you guys will want to use the same reference photos. On some days I used reference photos that I took personally so I wouldn't be adding those in. I decided to begin this challenge by painting lily pads. This was inspired by a photo I took while on a walk. This is a colour that I normally wouldn't really work with but I chose to start off with this Pantone chip because I knew that the first few pieces would look a bit wonky so I chose a colour that I don't super love so that if I were to mess up, I wouldn't be too hard up about it. For my second day, I decided to paint this cute little guy. I love painting animals and I decided to try my hand at painting an otter. I actually did a rough drawing on Procreate prior to doing some of these paintings so that I will have a clearer idea of how I would want to tackle these paintings in terms of layering colours and stuff. I found this painting slightly hard to do because I had trouble with the blending aspect because it's intentionally blending gouache with the chip itself. I really didn't like how the sea turned out for day 2 so I decided to do another sea painting for day 3 hence decided to do this turtle painting. I definitely like how this one turned out so much more than the otter drawing and this turned out to become one of my favourites in this challenge. <laughs> The next painting is also one of my favourites for day 4, I decided to go back to my comfort zone and paint clouds. Clouds are one of my favourite things to paint of all time. When I first started out painting 2 years ago, I remember having trouble giving depth to the clouds but now I've gotten a clearer process when painting clouds. And also on a side note, I felt it really satisfying when I managed to mix a colour for the shadow of the cloud that was really similar to the colour of the Pantone chip too. <laughs> This challenge really helped me to be more intentional in carving time out to paint. Prior to starting this challenge, I felt a lot of inertia to start on a painting and most of the time, I just felt like I didn't have the energy to even begin on one. Starting this challenge helped me to get into the momentum of creating pieces and as with all things, the more I painted daily, the easier it became. However, one drawback was that I felt pressured to create a new piece every single day. There were some days where it was just simply impossible for me to make time to do a full painting. Hence, I had to catch up by doing multiple Pantone paintings on a day that I was more free. This culminated in me having to rush through certain paintings or having to choose slightly simpler things to paint so as to be able to catch up. For the cherry painting, the background was different because I was painting at a different location and although I would normally not want to paint outside of the comforts of my home, this challenge placed enough pressure on me to feel like I had to do this so as to be able to successfully complete this challenge. So moving on to day 7, I painted rain boots and this was actually inspired by my bullet journal theme for April 2022. I will add a little picture of my bullet journal spread here if I'm able to find it and this April theme was made during a time when I was graduating from university, hence did not have sufficient time nor the mood to spend on my April spreads, hence I decided to redeem this April theme by doing a painting of rain boots. I definitely like how the rain boots turned out this time, although looking back, I would have liked to work more on the reflection caused by the rain and the puddles to make it more realistic, and as such, day 8 was kind of a continuation of that. I wanted to continue practicing painting rainy scenes and working on bringing forth that serene vibe that comes with a rainy day. This scene that I'm painting here is my idea of a safe haven and I would definitely love to have a window seat in my room in the future to just be able to sit there on a rainy day with a good book and a cup of tea and honestly it just sounds so peaceful to even think about.
I painted another window painting because I wanted to practice painting a curtain again and this time around I wanted the curtain to take a more dynamic shape. So I painted it moving in the breeze coming through the open window. I'm not sure where some of my clips went so I lost the process video for the curtain part but this is how it turned out and I am super pleased with how this looks. The next painting is also one of my favourites. I actually had to think quite a bit on how to begin this painting but ultimately decided to work on the froth of the sea first so that I would get a better idea of where all the highlights and shadows are. After I went in with the white gouache, this whole painting actually became a lot more manageable. It was actually really therapeutic to paint random squiggly lines for the froth. Another takeaway that I had from this challenge was that I became way more confident in my painting skills. I like to think that it becomes more apparent in the later Pantone paintings, but even for the strawberry painting, I already felt like I was more confident in mixing colours for the strawberries themselves. Gaining experience in painting, not solely from this challenge, but also from my past two years, has allowed me to become more sensitive to nuances and colours too. This allows me to create more detailed paintings as well. I remember one of the first few paintings I did when I was just starting out was a sea painting. I was following a YouTube video to the T when painting the sea back then as I had not much concept about painting and art in general. For this painting though, I definitely feel much more confident and decisive in knowing how to go about with the painting. I think it would definitely be interesting for me to look back at my old paintings and compare them to my current ones. Do let me know if you guys would like a video of me showing you guys how my art has evolved and grown for the past two years. The Deep Forest Pantone Chip was another one that I kept at the side of my table for a while because I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to paint and I was also afraid of messing this chip up. For this painting, I was envisioning walking through the woods and being surrounded by nothing but nature and the sound of birds in the distance. Like, just imagine that. I wish I stayed in a place that allowed for such hikes because I reckon that there would be such a peaceful activity to do to get away from the fast-paced life that I am otherwise used to. This Palm Lee's painting was inspired by Guan's art on Instagram. She makes the most beautiful and realistic art pieces. I tried to do the same for this painting but I think I had some difficulty with getting the mid-tones that I was happy with. I think I could have actually gone even lighter because the leaves look like they are blending with the background and not distinct enough. There were a few things that I wanted to practice more through this Pantone challenge and one of these things were waves. I actually painted waves multiple times in this challenge because I still wasn't satisfied with how they were turning out. I find it difficult to create natural flowing waves so this was something I was trying to work on improving. I was also trying to paint water droplets more hence decided to do this close-up painting of water droplets or dew on this leaf. Prior to this challenge, I've actually not done much rainy scenes or paintings with water droplets in them. This one in particular was slightly tedious to do but I really enjoyed painting this so maybe I'll do more rainy paintings in the future. Ooh, this lemon painting was super fun to do and I think this is a good example of being more sensitive towards the colours shown on the reference photo. In this case, I think painting lemons, especially overlapping lemon slices, is slightly more difficult to do because this results in a lot more variety in the colours of the lemon slices. It is so much easier to choose to tackle a portion of the reference photo at a time to really try and extract the colours that are present on the reference photo rather than to try to tackle the photo as a whole. This definitely makes the whole painting much more bite-sized. Get it? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. I genuinely struggled with the painting for day 19. I actually did a similar painting back in 2020 with acrylics and wanted to paint the Milky Way once more for this challenge too. I actually had the most trouble blending the colours with the Pantone chip for this day. The colours I chose did not fit with the background that much so it was a lot of going back and forth for this painting to try and get the look right. 
For day 20, I based my painting solely from the name of the Pantone chip, Morning Mist. This was, I think, the first painting in which I removed most of the color of the Pantone chip, leaving only a little bit of it behind as part of the shadows for the clouds or mist. I think it was just too difficult to incorporate the painting to the background, so I just decided to cover it up for the most part. Day 21 was me going back to painting raindrops once again. This was a painting that I've been meaning to do because I've been seeing it so often on Instagram and it looked like a really fun painting to do. This was also probably the fastest painting I did amongst all of the Pantone paintings in this challenge. I think it took 30 minutes to maybe less than an hour for this. Generally, my Pantone paintings took an average of around 2 hours. Most of the time was just spent waiting for the different layers to dry before painting my next layer. And there were times that I was actually just too lazy to wait for the bottom layer to completely dry. And then I would just go for my next layer and cause the paint underneath to disrupt it. It was truly more haste less speed for this. And I would really recommend just being patient and waiting for the layers to completely dry. Also, I forgot to say this at the start of the video, but I used Liquitex's acrylic clear gesso for the base of the Pantone chips before actually starting on my painting. This was a tip that I got from Hannah Mariah Plans on Instagram. It is nearly impossible to paint on the Pantone chips directly. There was once I forgot to prime my Pantone chip, and the moment I painted my gouache over the chip, the gouache just pulled together. Priming the Pantone chips with gesso is essential for your sanity because it helps the paint to go on much easier. The last way that the Pantone challenge benefited me was in helping my creativity be pushed to new limits. It changed from a mindset of, oh, I can't think of anything to paint, hence I shan't paint, to a mindset of, I have to paint so I will find something to paint. This shift in mindset really pushed me to stretch my creativity and helped me to be more intentional about seeking and finding sources of inspiration. A lot of my inspiration came from my daily life, Instagram, Unsplash, which on a side note is such an amazing platform filled with absolutely beautiful photos. For day 25, I painted more fruits. I painted some oranges this time around and I love the colour palette for this painting and I think I will want to do a proper painting of this in my sketchbook as well, so we shall see how that goes. I'm tempted to repaint some other Pantone paintings that I really enjoy in my sketchbook as well. Oh, I was actually planning to paint some sunflowers for this sunshine Pantone chip, but suddenly got the idea to paint a sunroof of a car instead. I think I probably got this idea because I've been hearing the song Sunroof playing everywhere, but I mean, it is such a catchy and chill song that I'm really not complaining. I would love to have a sunroof for my car next time. I always imagine going on a road trip and being able to open the sunroof and just take in the beauty of my surroundings. It has been such a long time since I last on a road trip, no thanks to COVID. And honestly, road trips are one of my favourite things in life. It's just filled with such good vibes. I have actually been compiling a road trip playlist on Spotify in anticipation of the next time I can go on one. And I just love this playlist so much. It puts me in a good mood every single time. This was my painting for day 28, but in my head, I thought this was the 30th and last painting that I had to do for this challenge. I remember painting this on 30th November and being so happy that I successfully completed this challenge, so I was devastated when I counted my pencil chips and realized I was short of two. I was so mad at myself for somehow miscounting, but because of this, I did not manage to finish 30 pencil paintings in 30 days. I did the last two on 1st December as a result. I wanted to make another snowy landscape, hence decided to do a cute little snowman for day 29. This time around, I made the clouds as wispy and loose as possible to give the idea of a cloudy snowy day. I also painted the shadows of the snowman first to demarcate the border between the snow and the snowman before going back in with white gouache. After the white gouache was completely dry, I added some of the paints I used for the shadow to add texture to the snowman and snow as well. Although I was still a little bit disappointed that I could not finish this challenge in the time frame that I planned for myself, this was still way more paintings that I did in the last month than I did in the entire year. 
over the past few months, I started to have the mindset that I was not good enough in my art. And I think to some extent, I was pegging how good my art was to the amount of attention my art was getting on social media. I'm not sure if any of you guys have the same problem, but when I wasn't gaining much traction on social media, it caused me to gain a fear and a lack of motivation to paint and do art in general. But anyway, I'm done with this challenge. Here is a quick look at all of my finished pieces. And on a side note, I ruined my first Pantone chip because I was trying to be smart and paint a layer of gesso on top to seal the gouache and it ended up reactivating and smudging everything. So that's just great. I really do make some dumb decisions sometimes. This challenge helped me to feel that painting was fun again. It helped me to realize that my art is an ever-evolving journey and it will only get as good as the amount of effort and practice I'm investing in it. So in conclusion, this challenge was really fun. I have 70 Pantone chips left to paint and I hope to be able to continue filling those up. Do give this or essentially any other challenge that encourages you to make art more consistently a try and you may just be amazed at your own results. So that's all I have for this video. Do stay tuned for more videos. I have a stationary haul and my 2023 Blue Journal setup that I'll be posting soon. So keep a lookout for that. And lastly, do consider subscribing as well if you enjoyed this video. It will mean so much to me. I will see you in the next video. Bye!